Hello everyone and welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. This is Recent Reads number 7. So I'm going to start off talking about the DNF and get it out of the way. The DNF was Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. Adier? I don't know how to say her name. This is like secular YA and it's book one in a series and it is... Not really a Mulan retelling, but it's like Mulan inspired, Mulan vibes kind of book. So it's set in Japan. The main character is the only daughter of a prominent samurai, Mariko. She is betrothed and in an arranged marriage to this emperor or the guy that's in line to become emperor or something. And on her way, her and her convoy to meet this guy um the convoy is attacked by bandits they like murder everyone in her convoy and try to murder her but she like miraculously like survives and escapes and instead of like going home like any sane girl would she decides she's going to go after these bandits so she cuts off her hair disguises herself as a boy and tries to infiltrate the black clan. She expresses her frustration of being a woman because like she's actually really smart and like into science and like inventions and stuff but people like don't take her seriously and she, they just are like oh just like marry this guy. That's what you're meant for. That's what you're supposed to do. She's really wanting to prove herself by infiltrating the black clan and like bringing these guys to justice or like killing the leader and finding out why they wanted to kill her in the first place. So she goes after them and how much can I say before it's spoilers? I guess that's all I'll say. I don't want to reveal too much. But yeah, definitely the Mulan vibes. You can definitely see like where that plays into the story. And that was the whole reason I really wanted to read this. I love Mulan. Like who doesn't? And I love the whole thing of like her disguising herself as a boy and trying to infiltrate this clan and then having to keep up this, you know, disguise and everything. But pretty early on, like a couple chapters in, I really wasn't feeling it and wasn't really connecting with the writing either. And I was like, uh, I have a feeling this might be a DNF but I kept reading because I wanted to give it like a fair chance and I started like getting into the story the farther I went but then I started not liking it again like I don't even know how far I got like maybe like halfway through or something so I decided I really just didn't like it so I decided to like skim to the end just to see like what happened and how things wrapped up which it's book one in a series so it didn't completely wrap up but a few things to note there was language in this book it wasn't like super heavy but it was definitely like sprinkled throughout the book there were no f words but there was kind of like all the other words in there this book was really violent and I'm saying that for the people that don't like violence but also like y'all know me I read a lot of violent books. There's blood, there's death. It doesn't normally bother me. But this was just like a different kind of violence that I'm not used to. And I was just like, this is kind of gross. Like, I don't want to imagine this. I don't want to visualize this. This is bothering me. The romance was like weird. I didn't like any of the characters. I thought the main character was super annoying. I didn't like her. She was not likable to me. And I didn't like the guy that she liked. I thought he was completely awful. All of the other characters too. Like, I just didn't really like the messages behind the book. This clan, they, they lie and cheat and steal and murder it's their way of life and she joins them and somehow I'm supposed to be like empathizing with this group and I'm supposed to be rooting for them and for this romance and they're like the good guys and I'm like no and I think I missed a lot of stuff that happened in the end because I was skimming so much I feel like someone died but I don't really care all around there were just a lot of negatives and I personally wouldn't recommend it I think there's a lot of like way incredibly better books out there that you should be reading instead like don't waste your time so yeah moving on from that one recruits by thomas locke this is book one in a duology it is a ya sci-fi about these two twin brothers dylan and sean for most of their lives they have been like dreaming about this like alternate world they just think it's like this dream that they both have but as it turns out that place they've been dreaming about is real this stranger moves in next door and as it turns out this man is 
from this other world and he has come to recruit these two twins because they are like special and he's going to train them there's this threat of like an alien invasion and like all this stuff I gave it two stars I did not like it this book was really a struggle for me to get through I would have DNF'd it the only thing that kept me going is that I was buddy reading this with a friend so I was really determined to finish it this is my second Thomas Locke book and I think I've come to the conclusion that this author is not for me I do have a couple other books by him on my TBR that I still kind of want to give a try but my hopes and expectations are very very low at this point I don't think he's for me uh, something about his writing style is very hard for me to get into. It's very hard for me to follow. It's just not very interesting in my opinion. I felt like a lot of things just didn't make a lot of sense or they weren't explained very well. Characters did things that just seemed to come out of nowhere. And I'm like, how are you doing this right now? Like, this just isn't making any sense. The romance was not well written, in my opinion. And it's just sad because I had really high hopes for the story because it is about two twin teenage brothers, which I'm really into. I don't read about like twins very often and it's a lot of fun and I really love stories about siblings and seeing their relationship and them doing things together. I just think it's really fun to read about, but it just was, it just didn't it didn't live up. The best part in the entire book was when the brothers were learning how to use their powers and they were practicing fighting with each other but then the fight kind of turned real and they were like totally beating each other into the ground and I thought it was very funny. That was the best part of the book in my opinion. So I'm definitely not reading book two. I did own it but I unhauled both of the books already. Not for me. Next I finished the Angel Eyes trilogy by Shannon Dittmore. I read book two Broken Wings and book three Dark Halo. This is a Christian YA spiritual warfare series and I really enjoyed book one. I gave it four stars. These two books I gave both of them three and a half stars. I still think that they were good and I still would recommend the series if you're into spiritual warfare but I just d didn't enjoy them quite as much as book one and I think I've realized that it's really just kind of like the plot and where things went and the stuff that happened. I just really wasn't as into as I was book one. And I also thought that a lot of like reveals and character connections and stuff that happened in book three, I, it started getting really confusing to me and I, it was kind of a lot to like keep track of and like who was who and who was connected to who and like all this stuff. So it was a little bit much. Um, I guess I should give you a little more details about the story, but basically in book one, our main character's name is Brielle and she comes home to her little Oregon town from the city after some kind of tragedy with her best friend. She's just depressed and having a hard time. She's a ballet dancer, but she doesn't really want to dance anymore because of everything that happened. She's kind of lost her inspiration. Then she meets this new guy at school. His name is Jake, and Jake has some secrets, um, but they start becoming friends, and Brielle gets her hands on an angel halo, which allows her to see into the spiritual realm, and she learns that angels and demons are real, and there's a real fight for human and souls that is going on in this other dimension that she can't see and she becomes a part of it. Again, still really good series, still would recommend. These two books just not quite as good as book one. I read Starlighter by Brian Davis. This is book one in the Dragons of Starlight series. This is Christian YA fantasy about dragons as you can see. This is a book one in like a four book series. Um, how do I explain this series? Also my copy is signed. I forgot to mention that in my book haul. I got these from a secondhand bookstore and this one was signed. I don't know if the other ones were, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Jason is our one main character and then the other girl main character, her name is Corin, and they're from two different worlds. Corin is from this world where dragons rule and humans are slaves. I was kind of skeptical when I first started because the dragons like talk and they act just like people. And so it was like kind of like amusing and kind of like, uh, I don't really know how I feel about this. It's kind of weird. And there's also like other talking animals like bears and stuff. And I'm not a huge fan of talking animals for the most part. Occasionally, like I have read books that I really loved that had like a talking animal in it and it like it was fine. But in general, when I hear like I find out there's going to be talking animals, it kind of is like an anti-buzzword. But I 
kept reading the story and I got really interested in the characters and like what was going on and I was able to like get past the initial like silly feeling but this life of slavery to the dragons is all this girl has ever known like she was born into it and she's heard myths of other worlds and other planets where there's more humans but she thinks that they're just stories and then our other main character Jason is from this other world where their people believe that this other world of dragons is a myth but some stuff happens with his brother and he discovers that maybe it's not so much of a myth after all and there's people to save over there so he kind of goes on this journey trying to find the gateway to the the dragon planet and stuff ensues i gave it four out of five stars i definitely want to continue the series and i i have to bring up this scene where the dragons are having like this court hearing with this like human that got in trouble and it's funny like it was just so amusing to me because it was just like a courtroom scene from like a human movie with people in it. I just thought it was really funny. Another fantasy book that I read is Heart of Red, Blood of Blue by Rebecca Belliston. This is a Christian YA fantasy book and it's about this girl. Her name is Gisela. She's actually a princess and she has albino. She's been in hiding for the last like 10 years or whatever because this like army commander from this other kingdom has been hunting down all of her siblings and killing them one by one to get revenge over something that happened when she was a child and now Gisela is the last heir to the throne and now her father who she hasn't seen in forever has like summoned her out of hiding because he's arranged a marriage between her and some other king from a different kingdom. But stuff happens and she doesn't want to marry this guy because he's completely awful so she goes on the run and crazy stuff happens that's all I'm gonna say because there's just like so much to the story but I'm gonna keep it more vague so I don't like give too much away um hopefully that's enough to like pique your interest though she starts off as such a naive immature like person and you like I was so frustrated with her this is my second time reading the book actually but like I was so frustrated with her the first time I read it because I'm like you are making such bad decisions like what are you thinking you're crazy she grows throughout the story so don't let her immaturity turn you off to the story because she does grow she learns and there's some really good twists in the story and there's good characters so you definitely need to read it the first time I read this book I gave it four stars but this second time I liked it even better than the first time it was just like so good I loved it so much it has a good romance the only thing that some people might not like is the violence it is pretty violent and bloody at certain times but it's not like overly gory so if you can handle a little blood and violence and death it's definitely worth the read and it is a standalone so that's nice if you're not wanting to get in super invested in like a really long series i read apprentice by kristen young this is book one in the underground collective series it is christian dystopian that's a genre we haven't talked about in a while for this one i'm just gonna read you the book description off of goodreads because i just i'm not sure how to like explain it in a good way so apprentice flick remembers everything except the first five years of her life and for as long as she can remember, Flick has wanted to enter the Elite Academy, home to the best, brightest, and most loyal members of the Love Collective government. Flick's uncanny memory might get her there too, even if it is the very thing that marks her as a freak. But frightening hallucinations start intruding into her days and threaten to bring down all she has worked so hard to accomplish. Why is she being hijacked by a stranger's nightmare over and over again? Moving to the Elite Academy could give Flick the future she's always wanted, but her search for truth may lead to a danger she cannot escape. For most of this book, for probably like three-fourths of it, I was enjoying it, but it just wasn't anything special and it wasn't very exciting. It was just kind of her day-to-day -day in this school with other kids, her being bullied by these other kids, her trying her best to like get to the Elite Academy and everything. But it was still like interesting just because I like... The different dystopian societies and seeing how the system works and everything and all the different books and like learning about it getting a feel for it so that's just always interesting regardless even if there isn't like a whole lot happening it was interesting just not like great until closer to the end of the book there were certain characters then certain things happened that i'm like okay i have to see how this plays out because i'm very worried i'm very concerned so in the end i decided to give it four out of five stars i have to say though our main character's name flick is her last name she goes by like apprentice flick all i could think about every time her name was said was a bug's life so i'm now currently reading book two I'm nervous continuing the series because I know someone that didn't love 
the way it ended so I'm nervous but hoping I like it better than they do. The Hunter and the Valley of Death by Brennan S. McPherson. This is book one in the Psalm series and it's more like a novella I guess. It's like a Christian allegoric type fantasy type of book I guess is how you would describe it. So it's like about this man and the story starts out with him waking up and he's in like the valley of death and he's trying to defeat death to save the woman that he loves because she's dying. He has lost a lot of his memories so at the very beginning you're kind of confused and you don't really know what's going on or why he's there. But you slowly learn the story along the way and as he starts to remember things. The Hunter in the Valley of Death is a profound meditation on life, death, loss, and love. Formatted as a fantasy parable on the topic of surrender, this story shows that there is only one who could kill death. And because of him and him alone, we say, oh death, where is your sting? Actually, this says it was only 85 pages. I think I read mine as an ebook. I actually, I had to buy it, but it was like a dollar or two. But I think mine was like 90 pages. So maybe that qualifies more as like a short story. I was just kind of bored with it for the most part. It's not my style of story. I couldn't really get into it. It wasn't for me. I gave it two and a half stars. But I know a lot of my friends liked it more than I did. So do with that information what you will. So now let's get into the historical fiction that I read. I have three books to talk about. So first we're going to talk about Deep in the Heart of Trouble by Deanne Gist. Book one was Courting Trouble. This is the Trouble duology. They're both about the same girl. Um, I didn't realize that this was a series when I picked this up. I thought it was a standalone and it, it reads like a standalone. You could read this and be perfectly happy and not be confused at all about what's going on. So at first I thought I might go back and read book one, but by the time I got to the end of this I was like actually I don't really need to read book one. I'm perfectly happy with this book by itself. So this is Christian historical romance set in Texas. Why are they all set in Texas? It's set in like the late 1800s, 1898. Essie Sprecklemeyer is the last woman anyone in Corsicana, Texas expected to see with a man on her arm. Independent and outspoken, she's known more for riding bicycles and outrageous bloomers than for catching a man's eye. And the last man who seems willing to give her a second glance is Tony Morgan, newly hired at Spreckelmeyer's oil company. The disinherited son of an old baron, Tony wants most to restore his name and regain his lost fortune, not lose his heart to this headstrong blonde. She conf confounds, contradicts, and confuses him. Sometimes he doesn't know if she's driving him toward the aisle or the end of his rope. So yes, I went into it with really low expectations. This is just something my dad picked up for me on a whim at like a thrift store. He just saw it and thought I would like it. So I went into it with really low expectations. I just picked it up because I was in the mood for historical and I honestly enjoyed it a lot more than I expected. There were some like cringe moments, some eye roll worthy moments, but I don't know. I was just in the mood for something like this and so it worked for me at the moment. So I enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. It worked for me. It might be one of those that as I sit on it for a while, it might end up going to like a three and a half star. I don't know. We'll see. And then I read two Joanna Davidson at Politano books. So first I read Finding Lady Enderly. This book was so, so good. I loved it so much. Five out of five stars. Our main character is Raina and she is a rag woman set during uh, Victorian times. She is a rag woman in London's East End and she is like walking home one day and some man approaches her with an offer and he's like hey super sketchy and shady by the way but he's like hey like I have a proposition for you if you want like a new and better life for yourself this is your chance meet me at the train station tomorrow at this time and I will take you away to your new life this woman is just desperate enough and intrigued enough to take him up on his offer so she goes he takes her to this abbey her job is to masquerade as Lady Enderly who's like a countess and she has to pretend to be this woman all the staff thinks that she's this woman but she doesn't really know like the reason for any of this and he won't tell her anything so she just blindly has to go along with all of this but then she starts being worried that maybe like she's really gotten herself into a really big mess and something sinister is going on and maybe her life could be at stake <laughs> like finally starts thinking sense. I just think it's a really really interesting plot line like I was hooked from the very first page when this man like approached her like in the middle of the night with this offer I was like oh my gosh like what the heck I was so like nervous that she was gonna get caught in the lie and found out and I was also so curious about who Lady Enderly really was and what actually happened to her and I had several theories and I just like could not wait to reach the end and find out like 
all the things. So this book was just so good. The romance was really sweet. I liked the characters and it was just really interesting and I loved it. It's definitely one of my favorite, if not my very favorite Politano book. I think it's I think it's number one maybe. It was really good. Highly recommend if you like Victorian era mysteries. Then I read A Midnight Dance. This is also a Victorian era novel but it's set like earlier Victorian than Lady Enderly. But this is about a ballet dancer. Her name is Ella. She wants more than anything to be a part of this really big like ballet company or whatever and there's this like lead dancer guy who she met many years ago and she sort of like helped him out of this situation and they dance together and now she like her dream is to like dance with him in a big production this whole book revolves around ballet and the theater you are very immersed in that world and that is like all she does is like practice and all this stuff but there's like a mystery about her mom and a mystery about like who her father is and stuff. I did enjoy this one and I gave it four out of five stars. It is not my favorite Politano book and I don't know if it's just because of the book itself or it has to do with I read this very shortly after I read Lady Enderly and that one was so fantastic that in comparison this one was just not as amazing or I don't know maybe I would have felt the same had I not just read that other book it's hard to say I'm not really sure but I just feel like the mystery in this one was just not as intriguing like I just didn't I just didn't really care about her mom and dad and who they were in their past and like what happened to me the mystery just was not as interesting something like these shoes disappear and throughout a lot of the book you're like who took the shoes and I'm just like I don't care who took the shoes there is still like some good twists and reveals at the end there was it just took a long time to get there I think that is all the books that I have to talk to you about today if I haven't forgotten anything. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them. I'd love to chat with you and let me know any books that you've read recently and if you like them or not. I'd love to hear all about it. Hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next Bookish Ramblings video. Bye!